I mean, they used to call it Oak's Judgment Tree because the elders in the village would go sit under them and counsel, and you know, in addition to getting shade and all that, also be getting this input, you know, from the vine. In Ayurveda, we have two others, pungent and astringent. So it's kind of broadening our power. About them, we have to redefine to, to shove astringent into this. What's the example of pungent? Would be chili pepper. It has a lot of pungency. Accurate, yeah, something that's accurate in the fight. Sulfur. It could be sulfur, sure. But you know what I'm saying? It's like uh, black pepper. Tobacco came in the 1500s, and once that came, they kind of dropped mm -hmm. everything else and now focus on the tobacco. And then the Moody's, the um, Sangomas of Southern Africa, would burn things whenever their idea, which was, a, I think, they taught me so much about the set setting of the sort of the place in which you meet your patient as a Sangoma, how important that is, and, and who you are to them, how much that has to do with illness, as you know, you know, the fact that you have a festering cut or something like that. And so they would. Um, if you came in and you were in shock or having anything going on that they felt involved a mental component, they would burn something and blow the smoke in your face and kind of, it would sort of stun you a little bit and then they'd shift you through some action, through some motion or some throwing the bones or have you drink something, they'd shift you to what they thought was at your normal healthy vibration and then kind of bring you back down again. Mm -hmm. So I think smoke has a much more powerful place than we are allowing it. Mm -hmm. It's just conscious smoke and having its place. Of course, the fire. I mean, this ointment that they made out of that, out of this Benjamin, which was the sap of this tree that grew there in the Middle East called the Styrex tree, which we actually have a Styrex in these woods here, uh, or at least in this region uh, that's in that family. We have like one. Well, one of theirs that's in the Middle East, the sap of that, is that has the same components that this one is, which is benzoin, which comes from Benjamin, and benzoic acid and all those kind of things. And these are emollients and preservatives and antimicrobials. And so it's very potent that way. So she was saying, what Juliet was suggesting is we take this stuff and distill it and use that essential oil. And they're nice steamed, they're nice uh, cooked, eaten raw, they're nice pickled mm. uh, in a vinegar or vinaigretted, you know, or added a fermented. And, um, and that's, that's the tip. So that, that goes on for a month or so. And then under the ground is this big, root, big knobby root, very hard, and um, if you make tinctures out of that or you boil it down <laughs> and make teas, own kind of labeling, so it's pretty pretty cool that way. And I'm doing an online discussion group, it's actually starting next week for those of you who use computers, and every two weeks you get a mailing of like 10 of these families that are sort of clumped together. So if you're interested in doing that, you just need to send an email to planttalk2008 at yahoo.com and you can get on that mailing list, and it happens every two weeks for about six months. All right, so that's nice. When the flowers are out and you get a low one, you can pick the flowers and put them in a water and have an ambrosia, and drink an ambrosia drink. Ooh, out of black locusts. Yeah. Here's one called uh, Sweet Bubba, or Allspice. Um, Calicanthus, sweet baba, right? Oh, sweet Carolina Allspice. I've been hearing everybody tell me. These are unique parts of this kind of family. This is a family that has a lot of um, calcium oxalate crystals in it. So if you tried to eat this root, it'd be like somebody, and I know this from experience, it'd be like someone was trying to shove a fork into your tongue. Very painful. Um, so it's not something I recommend eating the root of that. 